show a humanoid robot. You guys want to come in a little closer, okay? Yeah. Okay, and, and if you got your cell phones, you might want to whip them out. Because <laughs> usually what happens is once people see what he does, they, they say, oh, where's my cell phone? <laughs> So I tried to give you a warning in advance. I have not much to say for my daughter to sell you. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, so it's already a couple minutes after one. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Jason Stockton. My assistant Hi. is my daughter, Kaylee. Uh, our first speaker this afternoon is going to be Bob Barboza. Um, Bob's talk is titled Occupy Mars, Learning Adventures. Oh, Am I saying this correctly? Occupy Mars, fellowship, uh, learning adventures, fellowship programs for middle and high school students. And he has an assistant as well, and we'll get to uh, meet his assistant a little bit here. There you go, Bob, it's all yours. Okay, thank you very much. Let's see if we can hook this up. This goes here. And this is going on the belt. Well, I want to thank you. I know you've got a lot of choices here today, and Occupy Mars is a crazy subject. And uh, here we are, all together. Uh, my name is Bob Barboza, and I worked in the field of education uh, for, for many, many years. And I got real, really excited with this whole theme of Mars, because I was working with kids that were extremely gifted. And I needed a theme, and this was the perfect theme. Then I learned about robotics, and I got real excited about robotics. So what I brought with me today is a fully autonomous humanoid robot, and I'm going to have him lay down, and I'm going to uh, try to get him to wake up and to be 100% controlled just by my voice. Because I was thinking, if I were on an eight-month trip to Mars, what I would want is a robot that danced like Michael Jackson to go along with me, you know, because it's a long trip. So you take that long trip, you're going to need a little bit of entertainment. So uh, the last time I looked in my garage, I saw a lot of stuff. And I said, man, if I go to Mars, I'll never see this stuff again, especially if it's a one-way trip. So I said to myself, wouldn't it be interesting if I could take all of my books and materials and put it in the brain of this robot and take the robot with me? It'd be like taking a university with me to Mars. So if I needed anything, I could talk to my robot. He's fully autonomous with artificial intelligence. And he speaks 12 foreign languages. So if there are other teammates uh, with me, uh, he'll be able to speak in their languages and he just gave me that signal so he needs to see my face. Uh, now I'm in the room with a full audience of people. Please stand up. So there you are. I'm on my way to Mars. Fully autonomous robot claiming that his motor's hot. Well, you won't be on that long, so here you are. Fully autonomous robot, and all I have to do is touch him to activate him. What do you want me to do? Thriller. Thriller. I would have loved to be in the clip. Well, could you dance like Michael Jackson, because these people don't believe I can get you to do that. So, 
there you are. I'm on my way to Mars. I brought my own entertainment with me. So he's a combination of entertainment and everything under the sun. In a perfect situation, he would also be my medical assistant. So if I wore my Apple Watch and I had my iPhone in my pocket, this robot would be reading my vital signs and he could actually help me out. A little later on in the presentation, you'll see the real robots that will be doing that kind of work. But for right now, this is what I use with kids in a simulation program so we can simulate things. So now, I've got to get him to take a rest here. What do you want me to do? Go to rest. Go to rest? I am going to rest. Just pat my head when you want to wake me up. So if you hurt your back on the way to Mars, this is the way to sit down. So he'll show you how to get up, how to exercise. I wanted this robot to go, instead of me, to those Martian habitats here on Earth. And then we wanted to work with him remotely from a distance. So we're working on those kinds of things. So I'm going to do the rest of the presentation. I don't want you to get up and walk off this table. That's all I need to say, and he's OK. So here we are, the Occupy Mars Fellowship Program. Here's what I want to do. I want to get 10 kids like you and give you a fellowship to study about going to Mars. And I want to put them on a special team called the Tiger Team. And so what I do is I give the Tiger Team members real problems to solve. And here goes our little journey. The first problem we have is to leave Earth and to go to this place and to survive there. So my cadets have to be jet pilots, engineers, and scientists all rolled into one because as you heard today, if you were in some of the general sessions, those teams have to have many different kinds of skills so they could help each other out in an emergency. And then I got to start real young. I love this job. Two, two great things happen when I put on that astronaut outfit. Number one, I get free donuts at the local donut store. <laughs> all I have to do is show up dressed like that guy, and all of a sudden, they're free donuts. So it's worth it right there. And then sometimes I get to talk to preschoolers about astrophysics. And if you want to see some cute videos, you should hear their answers. You want to have a special session where you just hear the kids answering those questions. So my theme is Occupy Mars, the learning adventure. And I have to answer all of the tough questions, the who, what, where, when, and why. And if there is life out there, what would it look like, Mars and beyond? So our kids are dealing with that. My personal philosophy is this. The woman who trained me in education told me that all kids are gifted. It's up to me to find out where they're gifted. So I said, that's a nice philosophy. So that's what I use. Right here on Earth, from time to time, we go out to different places and try to simulate the Mars experience. This year it was New Mexico. And of course, the Mars Society has its own location. And this summer, I try to talk my wife into taking the big trip over to here so we could actually see this. So we ended up being on the freeway right back here, and we drove right past it. And I, I said to myself, as I was driving past this area, perfect location for Mars, right there in New Mexico. If you ever get a chance to go there, it's really an experience. So how do we fund all of this? The good people at the Super School Design Center is a nonprofit organization that was formed because we were working on the XQ Super School project. That's the project that Mrs. Jobs uh, came up with. Uh, that's the widow of the late Stephen Jobs. 
She came up with that project to rethink the American high school. So our team was formed, and this nonprofit was formed for that. And then I convinced the team to support this, the Barbosa Space Center, so high school kids could have their own space center. So you could almost think of me as NASA for kids. So there we are with our theme, and we have to form tiger teams. Who knows what a tiger team is? <clears throat> okay. When the Curiosity rover was on its way to Mars, one of the engineers looked on his screen and said, oh my God, we're off course. So they needed to pull together a tiger team of the world's greatest experts to, to fix that. So many times these rockets have an A computer and a B computer. So they'll bring down one computer while they work on it and let the B computer run the rocket. And then when it's fixed, they go back to the A computer. So I said, that's cool. That's what I want to do with kids. I want to form tiger teams. And then we'll train them and we'll put, well, you'll see. I got it all down here. Long Beach, uh, the, uh, at, uh, I, I'm from Long Beach, and the Long Beach Unified School District was kind enough to give me 10 students. These, the other five were at lunch, and there's some girls mixed in here, so we do have girls and we do have boys. But these guys stayed behind and someone took the picture, and I said, good, I'll put that in my presentation. So here's what we do. We train you to be a junior astronaut, a junior engineer, and a junior scientist. And we roll all of those three together, and then you go and try to become an astronaut because you've got all the skills they're looking for. This is our curriculum. Science, technology, engineering, visual and performing arts, mathematics, and the plus plus means computer languages and foreign languages because Right here at the Mars Convention, there was a speaker from Russia. There were people from Yugoslavia. We have to, you know, we're going to be in space with people that speak different languages. That's why we're using these humanoid robots that speak multiple languages. So foreign languages are important to us. This is the curriculum. This is what the kids will end up being able to do when they're done with us. So we need you to have those skills, and those are the skills that you'll find on the next generation science standards. Okay? These are the toolkits we put together for you. And unfortunately, these are all the books you need to read. <laughs> so so this is, there's no free ride with this space stuff. We gotta have an education, and, and I try to get kids to commit to things like, okay, I'm going to read this physics book this summer. That's your summer reading. We need to use miniature-sized 3D printers because there's not a lot of room on the spaceship and they don't want us to bring big, bulky things. So the, the, the theme is the smaller the better. So we're teaching our kids how to make all their tools. When I do projects with teachers, say you were the teachers, uh, there are all kinds of places we would take you on these special field trips as if you were part of the Occupy Mars Tiger team that was working on special projects outside. Before I got involved in all of this, we were taking kids to Antarctica every December. So Antarctica is our Mars. I love robots, as you can tell so far. This is the robot that might be going to Mars. You notice how big he is in compared to the robot that I have. So our kids are learning this robot, but they're thinking about this robot. And that's how that works. That's how the training program works. So there's a full, you can see how tall he is and what would happen. See, when he's dancing like Michael Jackson and I get my finger caught in one of those joints, that's one thing. But when he's dancing like Michael Jackson and I get my finger caught in one of those joints, you know what that's about. 
Serious stuff. Making robots as tall as I am using a 3D printer for every part of it. So you know how when you go out and buy a 3D printer, so you say, oh, I've got one. We had to buy about six of them and let them run seven days a week, 24 hours a day to make that robot. You have to guarantee your work at the Barbosa Space Center. So when your robot can do this, it's past the inspection. So in the meantime, you work on these guys. And I've got my robot reading the case for Mars, so please tell Mr. Zubin when you see him out there that I actually have my robot reading this book so I can listen to this uh, text on the way out on my eight-month trip to Mars. So audio books inside of my robot. And then what happens when you want to get those robots to look as close to a human being as possible? How's that? Creepy. It's creepy. <laughs> and then there's always getting a couple of robots. I'm really into robots. Uh, getting a couple of robots and taking them out on a nice Sunday drive. You could imagine what the people uh, that you pass on the freeway are, th are going through when they look out their window and find that the robot is actually driving my car. If you don't believe me, that's a Sunday afternoon. I take the little robot, put him on my lap, and the big one does the driving. Okay, getting more realistic. In some of the lectures today, they started talking about making things smaller uh, because it's cheaper to send them. And if you can make things smaller that can do these powerful jobs, that's really good. So we teach our Tiger Team students to reverse engineer the robots. Usually, we give them the robot and it's all completely built. They have to take it completely apart and then rebuild it again. What? I'm looking at the clock and I see I'm on a crazy deadline here, so I'm gonna hit the button and do less talking and more showing. Because the picture is a thousand words, I may not have to talk so much. So there are our toolkits. These are the different kinds of robots that we're producing to do scientific experiments. Well, is there life? All those lectures of nobody's found, Boeing couldn't find life, nobody could find life, but the kids at the Barbosa Space Center found life on Mars. So take it from me, that's what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna save you all that research. Kids Talk Radio is our vehicle so kids can tell this story and spread it around the world. So we have Kids Talk Radio China, Kids Talk Radio Japan. Uh, one of the speakers this morning was from Russia and I made her promise to communicate with me from Russia because we have Kids Talk Radio Russia. So, so here are all of the countries that you could go on. So if you wanted to write a paper and produce it on Kids Talk Radio, you could do that. You could take one of your science papers, have a kid read it, and put it on Kids Talk Radio. It's a heck of a lot better than academia. They won't publish your paper. There's a big waiting list and all that. Kids Talk Radio, you'll be up there in minutes. Save yourself some trouble on those professional papers. So our students are from all over the world and we try to communicate with them from a distance and here are our two students from Russia. They had a chance to come to the United States. They were in Los Angeles at the big science uh, uh, Intel convention where they brought the brightest kids from all over the world to one location and I got to get, oh, is that my warning? Okay, I see the emergency warning. Okay, we're gonna turn the steam up on the presentation, designing robots for Mars. There they are. That's what they'll look like. We got about 18 of them. This is, I'm just showing you two. Martian habitats. We're gonna save you some research. We're all over those Martian habitats. So instead of teaching traditional geometry, 
we're using geometry to do Martian habitats. So you can see we worked it out. So here are the students that I work with, and we're going at 100 miles an hour, but that's okay. This is what happens when I put together a tiger team of 10 kids. They use Dremel tools and all kinds of cool stuff. And then they give uh, little seminars. This is what I discovered. They'll call a tiger team meeting. Everybody will sit around and hear what he's discovered. Then they'll go back to work. Uh, we have a way of building, an app, uh, 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 building a Martian solution, taking a picture of it, putting sensors on there, and when you touch the sensor, the television set comes on and tells you what's going on. And then, we have found life on Mars. Don't listen to these other guys out here. We've already worked it out. <laughs> and we found a way to communicate with them. So, here you are. Another uh, element is satellite design. Kids coming up with outrageous satellite ideas, which are okay. If you're on a Tiger team, you can have outrageous ideas. We're bringing back the uh, old oscilloscopes, so if anybody has these in their garage and you're thinking of throwing them away because they're outdated, I want them. <laughs> Send them to me. So here we go. We have a real uninhabited island that looks like Mars. It belongs to the country of Cabo Verde. It's a 10-island nation off the west coast of Africa. It's where hurricanes are born. So the kids on those islands look up in the sky and they say, call Bob on Skype, tell him a hurricane's coming. There's my little team. We have an Occupy Mars band that should be playing here. I'm telling you right now, this band should be playing at this convention because here they are. There are the members. You see this guy? This is Trevor Lawrence. That's the tenor saxophone player for Stevie Wonder. He's in our band. He's in the Occupy Mars band. These are the futuristic instruments we're designing. This is neon gas with a didgeridoo. Heck of an instrument. And this is what you would look like if you joined the Occupy Mars band. You don't have to worry about being embarrassed because you'll be dressed up like this and your friends won't know it's you. <laughs> and then we take it, because of the radiation, we've had to go to switch to this kind of a situation. So this is the Occupy Mars band. We play all electronic instruments. And then we have special guest artists that play electronic instruments as well. We play at the VA hospital in Long Beach at the Blind Center. So uh, we usually play there once a month. This is what the band looks like when it comes together. Of course, my robot's in there. You can see them. We got the robotic idol advertisement. This is my dream, to put all of the equipment that we have in one vehicle and drop it off at your school. So you know you're, you're in school, you're in elementary school. Could you imagine if I dropped that off for two weeks and all of this stuff is in there? So there's my team. There's my campaign. I've been speaking at public libraries and I see I'm getting the three minute warning. This is how you can find me, barbozaspacecenter.com or Bob Barboza up on the internet or any of that. We have Kids Talk Radio Russia, Kids Talk Radio China. These are science channels, so you don't go up there to talk about how Kobe Bryant's doing with the Likers. So it's all science. And uh, I see my good friend from Russia is there in the audience, and I'm, s oh, that's okay. I wanna have great relations with Russia. I want our kids talking to your kids. And it looks like I'm out of time, right? Okay. So, here's what I'm going to do to help you out. Everything will be up on Kids Talk Radio. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Everything will be up, up, up at the Barboza Space Center. So all of the kids' projects and stuff, you can just go there and you'll see what we're doing. So it isn't like you lost out on anything. But it's question time. Yes, sir. We've got five minutes for questions. Okay. Question. Source, if you want to hit me up, this is all, you can use all my designs. 
cut him a check for a half a million dollars. I'll take <laughs> one of each. OK, who's next? <laughs> yes? Uh, so you also gave to all the, all the audiences? Well, you, you, you know what she's bringing up? Would you please come up here so we can get you on camera? Please come up. You got that wonderful outfit. I need to give you some air time. Oh, OK. Well, I'm actually speaking after you, so. OK, OK. <laughs> So, so, yeah. so here she is, and would you ask that question again for our audience? Sure. So the question is, do you also open up your programs for older people? Like we're, <laughs> we're getting that request quite a bit now. So we're starting to think maybe NASA-style Tiger teams for adults. Forget about the kids. Yeah, we need I to guess. have some fun. Yeah, OK. Yeah. All right. Next question. Yes. Why did you guys choose to Why did we make alien costumes? Well, we wanted to draw attention to this whole Mars thing. So we wanted to go out in the community and get people to start talking. So when we tried out this idea of dressing up like aliens and, and going out, and uh, we'd have a person like her come up and she'd do spoken word. And then we'd play the music and sound effects behind her talking about Mars. So we started visiting all the public libraries, and it got so popular we were touring all over the place. So I was more famous for uh, the Occupy Mars band than I was for the physics that I'm supposed to be studying. Any other questions? Right here. We are based in Long Beach, California, right next to Cal State Long Beach. We do a lot of, we do work at uh, Cal State Dominguez Hills, Cal State Long Beach, and the USC School of Engineering. They, they have a program called Mission Science and Mission Engineering, and every summer I work with USC, and, and sometimes I get to pick the theme. Like one theme was uh, uninhabited islands, and so we had an uninhabited island, so we did that. And then after that, I really got into Mars, and it's been Mars ever since. Any other questions? Well, I want to thank you very much. I know you had a lot of choices today. And to come in here and support a kids program, I'm really thrilled. Thank you. So.